Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, my name is Ammar Hattab. So today I want to present my paper of uh, rough carving of 3D models, which I did uh, as part of my PhD research at Brown University with Professor Gabriel Taubin. Uh, so the goal of my research is to create tools to assist uh, users in general in the manual carving craft. So given an input 3D model, we want to assist the user to carve it in uh, materials like foam or wood to get a physical replica of the model. So we followed the previous approach of sculpting of numbers. Um, I'm, not familiar, I'm not sure if you are familiar with this, but I will just show a preview of this work. So they use a projector and a camera first to 3D scan the material for sculpting, then to project guidance colors to help the user tell him where he need to add material or remove material to shape uh, the object. So the difference in our work is that we divided the carving into two stages, the rough stage and the fine stage. So given an input 3D model, uh, for the rough stage, we project uh, in cutting instructions for the user to help him uh, roughly cut the model before moving to the fine stage. For the fine stage, we used a similar approach to sculpting by numbers where we project uh, gu uh, guidance colors to help the user to complete his carving. So the focus of this talk is on the rough carving stage of this operation. So the first question is why we need the rough carving? Because the user can use, for example, a power carving tool to carve the model. Uh, the problem with that is that the milling operation generates a lot of dust. For example, for this model, it only takes uh, around 17.5% of the volume of this block, and the rest will go to uh, dust. And the same for other models. So it's a common practice for uh, people to use a saw to quickly remove large chunks of the materials first before they actually start the carving. Uh, for example, for this model, with this cut, it will remove around 40% of the volume in this uh, block. And similarly for this model. So for the steps of our uh, method, the user will start with a material that's fixed on a stage that could be rotated in 90 degrees. So we have only four, four orientations. Um, we start projecting the cutting instructions and we allow the user to, uh, to use, for example, a pencil to mark where he needs to um, do the cut before actually performing the cut using a saw. Then we 3D scan the material after the cut and we project the next instruction. So with this video, we, s we see this operation where um, we project the instruction, the user can mark it and then he can perform the cut. Then we 3D scan the material and project the next instruction. And we do this in iteration until the user um, decided to move to the next uh, stage. So this is the result of the rough carving stage, for example, for this model. So for the method, uh, to generate these uh, car cutting instructions, we were looking to uh, carving guides for beginners. For example, this chainsaw carving guide. And we noticed that they have two types of cuts, uh, the straight cuts or the blocking cuts, like number one here, just straight planner cuts, and the stop cuts that are composed of two straight cuts uh, meeting at the corner. And then they result in this rough shape of the material. So our approach is to find the cut of the previous two types that removes the largest amount of material. For example, this is the cut that removes the largest amount of material in this uh, step or the initial step, which is kind of a greedy approach. And then we do this in iterations. Um, we stop and when there's some stopping condition or where the user decides to move to the next stage. So to find uh, this largest cut, we do uh, try different cuts. We 
kind of search, try different possible cuts, and for each cut, we compute the volume that, uh, the removed volume, and we only keep the cut that removes the largest amount of material, this at each iteration. And to do that, we, we need to look to the model from a uniformly distributed set of directions, and for each direction, we project the model vertices on a plane aligned with that direction. Then we find the silhouette uh, of these vertices, and then we find the convex hull of the, uh, of the silhouettes, and we compute the concave regions. And, when, and then we use, we, define, we use these regions to define the cuts that we need. So we have two types of cuts. For the planar cuts, we use the lines of the convex hull. Uh, for each line, we project it toward, uh, in the direction uh, toward the material, and we compute the volume of the intersection, and if that's the largest uh, volume, we keep that cut. And similarly, for the stop cuts, we use the concave regions. For each concave region, uh, we extrude it toward the material in, that, in the direction, um, and then we intersect it with the block or, or the material, and we compute the volume of the intersection, and we only keep the cut that removes the largest amount of uh, material. So, so, sorry. Yeah, so we show here an example of these cuts generated for this model. Yeah, and these are the same cuts with uh, the amount of material removed at each step. So from the experiment, we found that users tend to overcut the instructions that we give them. To solve that, uh, we have to add a safety offset to each cut instruction, and that helped reduce the overcarving, overcutting problem. So we show here some rough carving uh, experiments using our system and some rough 3D models um, simulated using our algorithm for some input 3D models and for each one of these models we estimated the time it requires for carving I uh, use or for rough cutting and it, on average it was 10 times faster than 3D printing but of course uh, it gives you a low fidelity model. So in carving, there's a trade-off between fidelity and uh, speed. So the more time you spend on the carving, you get a higher fidelity model. Uh, for the runtime of the algorithm, uh, since it depends on the number of directions we select and the number of vertices and faces of the model. So for example, for this input model, it, it took around 300 seconds to compute uh, all the directions and the cuts. Uh, but we found that if we simplify the model first, it can uh, go to the order of seconds. And this simplification will not affect the output because we are in the rough carving stage, so, so the fine details will not, uh, uh, we don't care about them in this uh, stage. Um, for the limitations, so there is a visibility limitation. There are some regions that we cannot access with the cutting tools, of course. And then there's also uh, visibility limitations for the projector because we use this um, carving stage or cutting stage that could be rotated in 90 degrees. So we only have four orientations. So it's, there are some parts of the model that will not be, um, I mean, accessible by the projector from any direction. Um, we could solve this by using uh, actual carving stage that could be rotated in any uh, orientation. And then there's also a problem with the shadows because um, we use a projector and the, the, the user hand and tool will, uh, will cast shadows on the model. Sometimes the user has to move his hand and to see the actual uh, guidance. So this also could be solved by, for example, using multiple projectors or other approaches. Um, at last, I show some finished carvings using uh, both the rough stage and the fine stage of our work. So in conclusion, 
Uh, we presented a system to assist users in carving 3D models uh, with spatial augmented reality and 3D scanning. And we divided the carving into two stages, uh, the rough and the fine stage, the fine stages. In future, we want to perform uh, more user studies, uh, trying to get more people to use our system and get more feedback from uh, designers and people on the creative side. Thank you.